Today, we're gonna to be talking about the most important setting that you need to understand when it comes to shooting video and the rule that goes along with it. And I say rule in such heavy quotations because like almost anything in video and filmmaking, it's more about understanding the rule, the knowledge of the rule, and then knowing what's gonna happen when you decide to either follow or break that rule. So secure the cup and let's talk about shutter speed, shutter angle, and the 180 degree shutter rule. Let's kick things off by talking about shutter speed. Shutter speed is the amount of time that the camera is going to be capturing light in each frame, either on the film or on the sensor. The reason that we call it shutter speed is because it's done by actually physically moving the shutter mechanism out of the way, letting the light in the camera to hit that film or sensor. More recently with digital imaging, this is done electronically and doesn't necessarily require that actual physical mechanical shutter. So for example, if we were to use a shutter speed of one one hundredth of a second, that means that's how long the light is going to be let in and expose our image per frame. And if we were to slow down that shutter speed to 1 50th of a second, now we're letting in the light to hit that sensor or film for twice as long, so our image is going to be twice as bright, giving us a one-stop increase in exposure. But exposure is only really half of the equation here. Shutter speed is also how we control the look of motion in our image as well. If we have a slow shutter speed, anything moving in the frame is going to be blurred to some extent. And if we have a super fast shutter speed, we're going to freeze all of that motion in each frame. So your natural instinct at this point may be to crank up your shutter speed super fast, make sure everything is frozen in the frame because who wants blur in their images, right? Well, actually, if you do this and you freeze all of the motion, get rid of every little ounce of motion blur in your image, that can start to look really weird to us because we do naturally see motion blur. And the best part is that there's a super easy way that you can prove this to yourself right now. Take your hand, put it in front of your face, and just wave it back and forth really quickly. While you look absolutely ridiculous, you'll also notice that you do see the motion blur on your hand in the form of it kind of streaking out. So of course, because we see this in real life, our brains know and expect it of realistic looking images. So if we take all that out in our videos, it's going to look weird. So now the question is, when we're shooting video, how much motion blur do we want? And how does that translate to our shutter speed setting? Now, before I just give you the answer, I want to show you a couple of examples. And down in the comments, let me know which one you think looks the most natural. But of course, to do this, we're going to want some great music to go behind the examples. What you got for me? I'm trying, man, but it's tough. You're really picky about the music in your videos. That's true. I am a little bit picky, but just try this. Go to trackclub.com. Trackclub.com. Yeah, now just use the filters up at the top to kind of like narrow down our choices. Okay, yeah, no, I see it here. So something like uh, genre of pop, and then maybe we'll do for energy, like a medium high, something like that. Yeah, that sounds great. And can you also just choose no vocals under the vocals drop down, just in case I want to like talk over any of them? Okay, no vocals. Dude, the quality of the music on here is absolutely insane. I think I found a song. The problem is that there's like a huge saxophone solo in the middle of it. So I'll just find something. Okay, else. wait, just before you dismiss that track altogether, this is where track club really shines. If you go to the right side, there's something called Mix Lab, and it'll bring up all the different stems from that track so you can customize it however you want. No way. So I can just like go in and like mute the saxophone and then we've got the perfect song. Exactly. So you can mute anything you don't want. You can change the volume of anything that you want to. And then you just download your customized remixed version of the song. Dude, this is absolutely insane. We should see if they'll sponsor one of your videos. Actually, they're sponsoring this video. So there's a link down in the description for people to go get a free trial if they want. Uh, that's too perfect. Okay. Well, uh, song is all lined up here. We're ready for those shutter speed examples. Awesome. Thank Thank you. All right, here's the examples. Leave a comment down below. Let me know which one you think looks the most natural. <laughs> 
Now that you've seen the examples and you've left your comment down below letting me know which one you think looks the most natural, I wanna talk about something called the 180 degree shutter rule. But in order to get to that, we first need to talk about something called shutter angle. Shutter angle is just another way to talk about shutter speed, specifically in how it interacts with the frame rate that we're shooting our video at. So all of those examples that you just saw were shot at 24 frames per second. Now imagine that our shutter in front of our sensor or our film is a spinning disc that has a chunk taken out of it. And every time we advance by one frame, that disc is going to make a full rotation. So the disc is going to be blocking out all the light, except for when we get to that part of the disc that is cut out. So if we're shooting in 24 frames per second and we have a disc that's cut perfectly in half, we're going to be exposing the image for exactly half of each frame. At 24 frames per second, each frame is going to be 1 24th of a second, which means that we're going to be exposing for 1 48th of a second. So we would call this a 180 degree shutter angle because we've removed 180 degrees of that spinning circle to allow the light through. If we were to increase the frame rate that we're shooting at, let's say to 60 frames per second, then at 180 degree shutter angle, the shutter speed would increase as well. So we'd be at 1 1 20th of a second because everything is moving faster now. So you can always just figure out your 180 degree shutter angle by multiplying the frame rate by two and putting it under a one. But what if instead of cutting out 180 degrees, half the disc, what if we only have a quarter of the disc cut out making a 90 degree hole? This would be called a 90 degree shutter angle. And instead of being exposed for half of each frame, it's now going to only be exposed for a quarter of each frame. So we've increased the speed of our shutter. So the smaller the angle, the faster the shutter speed. And then the opposite is true as well. If we want a 360 degree shutter angle, it's like we remove the disc completely and the frame is exposed the entire time that it's there. So for 24 frames per second, we would get 1 24th of a second shutter speed. Now, as far as I'm aware, wider shutter angles, anything beyond 180 degrees is only possible on on digital cameras because they don't rely on those physical shutter mechanisms. And of course, if you're trying to figure out your shutter angle or what your shutter speed is from a shutter angle, you can do that by using math. So why does this whole shutter angle thing matter when we're talking about choosing a shutter speed for our video? One reason that you may want to think in terms of shutter angle instead of shutter speed for video is because that's the way that a lot of professional video cameras work as opposed to photocentric cameras which focus much more on shutter speed. There are some hybrid photo video cameras out there that do give shutter angle as an option and I absolutely love that. I wish more cameras would do that. Panasonic specifically has been doing this forever and I know that Sony's got some firmware upgrades coming for their FX3. Anyway. I digress. The other reason that we may want to think in terms of shutter angle goes back to something that I mentioned earlier called the 180 degree shutter rule. It's widely accepted that the most natural shutter speed that you can choose is the one that follows a 180 degree shutter rule. And if we remember our math from before, that's always gonna be twice the speed of whatever your frame rate is. So if you're shooting 24 frames per second, that'll be 1 48th of a second shutter speed. If you're shooting at 30 frames per second, for example, that'll be 1 60th of a second shutter speed and so on and so forth. Keep in mind that some cameras might not allow you to get exactly a 180 degree shutter rule. The A7CR that I'm shooting on right now, for example, doesn't allow for 1 48th of a second shutter speed. So I'm just using 1 50th of a second because it's the closest. And if we remember from the examples earlier, there was a 1 50th of a second option in there. So hopefully that's what you put down in the comments for the one that you thought looked the most natural. But if you thought that that was it and it wouldn't get any more complicated than just use the 100 180 degree shutter angle rule all the time, buckle up because there's more. There are three things that we need to keep in mind in conjunction with the 180 degree shutter rule. And the first of those is creative license. A 180 degree shutter angle at 24 frames per second may look the most natural to us, but what if looking natural isn't the goal for the shot? For example, if we use a 360 degree or even 720 degree shutter angle by slowing down our shutter speed, we can get more motion blur in the image and we can get a kind of dreamy, sluggish, or even totally drugged out look if we push it. Alternatively, if we use a 90 degree or 45 
five degree shutter angle by speeding up that shutter speed, we can get a kind of jittery and urgent and panicked feeling that might fit the scene. But the next thing that we also need to keep in mind is that shutter speed is also going to affect our exposure. All of these creative changes that we're talking about are going to have implications when it comes to how much light is actually getting into our image. The way that we can counteract this is either by using other settings on our camera, like adjusting the aperture, or we can use things called ND filters that darken the image before it ever actually enters the camera in the first place. If we're shooting in a dark situation and we need a little bit more light, as long as we're okay with getting more motion blur than a 180 degree shutter angle would give us, we can actually decrease the shutter speed and get more light. If you want to shoot with a narrower shutter angle, you're going to need more light. But again, this can be used to your advantage if you're shooting out in bright sunlight and you need to make it darker, you can narrow that shutter angle and then you'll get less light into the camera as long as you're okay with having a bit more of a jittery and grittier and sharper look. People often refer to this as cranking the shutter and like so many things, you will find people all over the internet fighting about whether it's okay or not. You may have noticed earlier in the examples that how much movement is actually happening in the frame makes a big difference whether you can tell the different shutter speeds apart or not. So if there's not a lot of movement in your frame, you can get away with a lot more as far as playing with your shutter angle. The third thing that we need to keep in mind when we're talking about shutter angle is how it's going to work in conjunction with the frame rate of playback. 24, 25, and 30 frames per second are generally frame rates that we shoot at to play back at those same speeds. I think of them as real-time frame rates. And for all of these, our eyes are pretty trained to like a 180 degree shutter angle. It looks totally natural and that's great. But what happens if we wanna shoot at a faster frame rate, something like 60 frames per second? For myself, I almost exclusively use 60 frames per second for slow motion video. So I shoot in 60 frames per second and then I slow it down by two and a half times to play back at 24 frames per second. And for this, I find that shooting at a 180 degree shutter angle works great. So I'll be shooting at as close to 1 1 20th of a second as possible. Now you might be thinking, wait a second, if you're shooting at 1 1 20th of a second, isn't that gonna be way less motion blur than we would normally get from 1 48th of a second that we would shoot normally at 24p? Yes, you are correct. And the reason that this still works is because when we slow down the 60 frames per second footage to play back in 24 frames per second, we actually imagine that the object is moving slower and slower moving objects create less motion blur. However, there are some cases where people like to shoot at 60 frames per second for real time playback also at 60 frames per second. Can you see where the problem might be here? Regardless of whether we're shooting at 60 frames per second or 24 frames per second, if we're playing it back at the same speed that we shot it, the motion will be in real time. So if we're using the 180 degree shutter rule for both of these cases, there's going to be one big difference. The 60 frames per second version theoretically will have 2.5 times less motion blur because the shutter speed is 2.5 times faster. Now, the problem with trying to display this in a YouTube video is that I can't. I can't change the frame rate of playback in the middle of a video. So if you wanna see this in action, you're gonna to have to go get a little nerdy yourself. But my personal experience is that if 60 frames per second is being shot to be played back in real time also at 60 frames per second, it looks really weird to use the 180 degree shutter rule because there's not enough motion blur. Now a huge part of this probably has to do with 24 and 30 frames per second being the kind of more standard real-time playback frame rates. But I think it also goes to what we did earlier when we waved our hand in front of our face like goofballs. To me, a shutter speed of 1 48th of a second for real-time playback looks the most similar to what I see in my real life. 1 60th of a second looks pretty close to me still, but as soon as we get up to 1 120th of a second, it just looks strange. So if you're shooting at 60 frames per second and the goal is to play that back also at 60 frames per second, I I would actually recommend that you use a 360 degree shutter angle to get the right amount of motion blur. Okay, I know that was a lot, so let's take a deep breath and we'll sum things up a little bit. Shutter speed affects two different things, motion blur 
and exposure. Shutter angle is just another way to look at shutter speed in relation to the frame rate that you're shooting. The 180 degree shutter rule is a great rule to follow in most cases, but can be broken for creative uses or if you're shooting for real time playback at higher frame rates. And of course, in the end, it's your art, so do what you want with it. If you found this video helpful, do me a favor and share it over on your socials to help out your other creative friends as well. You can do those fun things down below like liking and subscribing if you want to. Huge thank you to Track Club for sponsoring this video. Huge thank you to you for watching and I'll see you next time. I'll see you next time.